Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. In today's episode, we're working with light, color, and detail. Uh, we're starting out with this particular image. It's a camera raw image. It just has a little bit of noise reduction and sharpening on it, and we're going to turn it into here. This by no means is a full edit, but it's just the starting phases. So without any further ado, let's get started. This image right here is a camera raw image and it is pretty much right out of the camera. Now I did start out in Photoshop because that is my workflow. You could have started right out here in Luminar 4, but my workflow is Photoshop. I did some uh, capture sharpening and noise reduction using uh, some Topaz software. I used uh, Sharpen AI because it was a very low ISO image and I find that that really works great for removing noise and sharpening up your image. So that's all I did and then I brought it right in here to Luminar. So let's start working. Uh, and this is, this is generally the start of my workflow, working with light, uh, color, and detail, all right? So I'm going to come up here to light, or not actually light, I'm going to come to AI Enhance. This is my starting point. I'm going to take AI Accent and start to bump it to the right. And it's going to use its artificial intelligence to really give my image a nice look here. So I like what the people at Skylum have done with this filter. And, it, and again, it works with artificial intelligence. How does it work? I have no clue, but it's really nice and you got to try it. Now let's play with the AI Sky Enhance and see what that does. And yeah, it gives my sky a little more pop, darkens it up in here a little bit at the top, which is which is okay, and that looks good. And I'm kind of happy with that. So that's my starting point. Let's click the uh, split screen icon right here and see where we've come. So there's our original, and here's where we've come to so far. So already with the AI Enhance, we've got we've come a long way, and I'm really happy with this. My next step is to come to AI Structure because it's right under AI Enhance, and I'll just open this up here. And this is a very simple slider to do, and it's a very powerful slider, but you don't want to go too crazy with it, because if you go too crazy, it's going to look really not too nice, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. So if you take this amount, and I highly recommend with any slider and any piece of software that you ever use, really pull those sliders around and see what they do. In other words, drag them to the right, drag them to the left. You'll notice when I drag it to the left, it takes details out. When I drag it to the right, it adds details. Now that's up full right there, as you can see. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's adding a lot of detail to my image. And if that's a look you're going for, then, then go with it. But in my case, I always recommend that you don't go too nuts. I usually stay under 20, somewhere around there. It's kind of, kind of the way I work, but that's me. And you might have a whole different approach, but this is what I do right here. Not saying it's right, but this is where I like to be. Right around, you know, anywhere between 15 and 20, I think looks good. Now, if we click this little toggle right here, we can see here's the before and here's the after. But as you can see right here, we're just adding a little bit of extra detail. So that is my second step in this little process that I'm showing you right here. All right, so we worked with AI Enhance and AI Structure. And note, take a note here, whenever you make adjustments, see how these uh, different tools are kind of gray, gray, the printing is gray. And then when you add in an adjustment, they turn white, so they get lighter. So you can tell what things you've adjusted. So that's kind of important to note. Now we're gonna come up to Light. Let's click on Light. Now in Light, we can work with our white balance. Uh, I'm looking at this image and the white balance looks good. But if it was off, we can work with the temperature and tint to get that uh, corrected. Or we may want to use it for artistic reasons. Like, for instance, I may want to warm up the uh, temperature for artistic purposes, or I may want to cool it down, depending. But in my case, I'm just going to double-click temperature and get it right back to where it was. The next thing I'm going to work with is exposure. Now, just really examine your image. Is it too bright? Is it too dark? If it's too bright... Uh, pull the exposure to the left. If it's too dark, pull the exposure to the right. In my case, I think it looks really just about right. I might just increase that exposure just a little bit, maybe to like a 0 0.10, just a very minor bump in the exposure. Now, the next uh, slider I'm going to use is a smart contrast. Now, this is a unique uh, contrast adjustment to Luminar 4, and they've had it in Luminar 3 as well. Now, let me tell you what it does. Typically, a uh, contrast control will make the lights lighter and the darks darker, adding contrast to the image. Whenever you do that, however, you'll get color shifts, like your colors will get, if you add more contrast, the colors will become more saturated. Um, if you um, 
add more contrast, the shadows will tend to block up and you'll lose detail and shadows. Well, this smart contrast protects that. So it protects you from getting color shifts and it protects your shadows from getting blocked up. So it's a really cool uh, contrast adjustment and definitely want to use this one. It's great. So let's take the smart contrast and let's start to move it up to the right. And we'll just add a little bit of extra contrast in this image. And again, we're going to protect it from getting uh, color shifts. And we're also going to uh, keep those shadows from blocking up. So I love it. Now, typically what I'll do next is just take my highlights. And I generally, sometimes I'll bump them to the right if I feel I need more highlights. But more often uh, than not, I'm moving them to the left a little bit. So I'm just going to ease off my highlights a little bit just to tame those highlights down right around there. And all the time I'm looking at my histogram to make sure I'm not um, clipping my highlights because you never want to clip highlights on an image. It's very important. It's okay to block shadows up a little bit, but you never want to clip highlights. And the reason I say that is if you ever go to make a print, if you have an inkjet printer and your if your highlights are clipped, what's happening is no ink will be going down on the paper. So you'll see these little bare spots of of the image with no ink down and if you hold it off to an angle you'll you'll see there's something wrong with that print so you never want to clip your highlights very important because again when you print it all you'll see is the white paper showing through so there'll be no detail whatsoever and no ink being put on the paper so you don't want to do that that's a no-no all right off the soapbox there so never clip your highlights so I'm pulling my highlights back a little bit because remember I added contrast so I, I don't you know and I'm going to make my lights lighter so I'm just protecting my highlights a little more by easing off a little bit. Now I may want to open up these shadows here a little bit so even in these darker areas we can see a little bit of detail but not much but if I start to bump this up to the right I'll open those shadows up. So I can go, I can go, in this image I can pretty much take it the whole way to the right and it looks pretty good. But I don't ever want to go too far with it, but right around there, it just opens up my shadows a little bit. Now inside of advanced settings in here, you can work with your white point and your black point if you need to. On this image, I don't need to, and this tutorial is not about that right now anyway. And we also have a curves adjustment in here, which curves are very powerful. I'm going to take a whole video and go over curves with you, okay? But for now, I'm not using it. In this initial stage of my workflow, I don't use that anyway. Now we're moving on to color adjustments. So here's what I recommend for this next adjustment. We're going to be adjusting color right here. But here's what I really recommend. Go to layers and come to the plus and add a new adjustment layer. All right. And the reason I'm saying this is after we make color adjustments, we may, we may want to ease off on all those adjustments. And so we're going to be working with individual colors, but I want, might want to just pull back in the overall saturation of the entire adjustment. And that's where this particular adjustments amount slider is going to come in very handy. So this is a very important step here. So now let's come back to the Essentials tab and come down to Color. All right. Now we have a saturation adjustment here. So we can, you know, increase the overall saturation of our image globally or decrease it globally. And this image looks pretty good right where it is, so I'm just going to double click it, and I think it looks fine. But the one I like to play with is Vibrance. And the Vibrance, what it's going to do, it's going to look at weaker, lower saturated colors and start to pull those up. So it's more of an intelligent uh, saturation control. So let's just pull that up a little bit. And you don't want to go crazy here either. See, you can go nuts and it looks horrible. But I'm thinking probably right around... A 20 right there looks pretty good. Now we can click this little toggle here and see the before and after. Yeah, so that little bit of vibrance is nice. It's not overboard. Also, if your image has a color cast, you can remove it right here. And this is uh, an intelligent uh, color cast automatic removal. When you move it to the right, it'll start to take out color cast. So if you're seeing color cast in your image, play with the remove color cast and it'll really help you out. But in this image, the colors look great. All right, so now we're going to come to the advanced settings. Now, inside the advanced settings, and by the way, if your advanced settings aren't open, you'll see advanced settings right here. Just click on that and they'll open up. These guys are amazing. And the reason I say that is because Luminar breaks this down into all these different colors here. Red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple, and pink. So we have all these different colors that we can play with. 
and adjust them individually, which is really nice. And we can adjust their hue, their saturation, and their luminance. I like to start out here and take this luminance slider just to target the color I'm working with and take this luminance slider and watch right in here because this is where the red tones are right here. But you'll see this when I move this to the right, see those reds get lighter. If I move it to the left, they get darker. So you can move that back and forth and find your red tones in your image and see if you want to play with that. In this case, I'm happy with the red tones. I'm not even going to touch those. Let's go on to the next tone, which is orange. All right. Now with this orange tone here, let's play with the luminance to target it and see where it's sitting. So whatever is getting light are the orange tones. When I move it to the left, you'll see them getting darker. So we can find out where those orange tones are at. And do we want to lighten them up a little bit? We may just want to lighten them up a little bit here with the luminance. And we can increase their saturation and adjust their hue as well. So let's play with their hue here a little bit. What if I shift them a little bit to the left? See, I can make them a little more orange. And I think that adds a nice little uh, color contrast to the image. And I like that. Look like down in here, I think it looks really pretty. See that? So we can alter those colors a little bit. Because we are photo artists and we can come in here and do whatever we want to our images. So let me just make that a little more orange that way. And do I want to increase the saturation on a little bit to bump these colors up? It is a fall scene and I want to have a nice display and burst of color. Now, I don't want to go crazy and do the old clown vomit deal, but I think maybe right around there looks good. So that's nice. And we can always come and click this toggle and see here's before and here's after. And then remember at the end, we're going to come back up to the layer and we can adjust the overall adjustment and ease off in the entire adjustment. And I'll show you that when I'm done here. Now we're going to go to yellows and let's target our yellows. Where are they at? Okay, now we can see where our yellows are at. Do I want to lighten those yellows up? If I do, it's just going to be a very little bit. Maybe somewhere... Maybe right there. Now let's play with the saturation. And I might just give them just a little bit of saturation. Maybe something like that. And do I want to mess with their hue? No, I think I'm going to double click hue and get that back. Or I can, I can double click the actual circle right here as well. So you can either do the word or the actual slider circle to get it back. So I'm happy with that. And the other colors I'm really seeing in here are... I don't think there's going to be much cyan. So let's click on cyan and move this uh, luminous slider. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of cyan. So I'm going to double click luminous, set it back. Let's go to blues. Now we know we're going to have blue in here. So let's play with the luminance. Do we want to lighten our blues a little bit? And I might. I want this to be a nice cheery open fall scene. So I might lighten those blues up a little bit. But I might want to give them a little bit of saturation. I think their hue looks really good. But I think a little bit of saturation in the blues is going to be nice. Don't want to go too crazy, so maybe right around there looks pretty good. Let's click this toggle before and after. Happy results so far, and I think we're done. One last slider I do want to point out, and that's hue shift. This is nice. If you do want to alter and shift your hue a little bit, if you take this to the right, you'll alter the, you'll make it more to the blue side. Now, you can make your image go really crazy here, and you might say, I've made a beautiful piece of art right here. Or move it to the other side and say, ooh, yeah, look. So you can come here. So, And you might say, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Hey, and if it's pop art, you might want that. So bear that in mind. But anyway, hue shift for me is just if you feel your hues are a little bit off, you might want to shift them a little bit one way or the other. So I can favor more of the oranges here. So on this hue shift, a little bit goes a long way. So be very, very careful with it. So I'm just going to double click it and set it back. But I think that looks nice. Now, let's come up to the layers up here. Click on the layer icon and we're on adjustment layer one. And by the way, you can name your layers by coming right here and clicking on uh, rename layer. In fact, let's just do that. Let's call this color. So we'll know this is our color adjustment. It's a good idea to do this so you don't get lost later on in the edit if you have to come back and readjust things. But now let's take this a adjustments amount slider. Now watch if I pull it the whole way to the left, I'll get rid of all that adjustment. So now I can slowly build it up. You know, because when I take it the whole way to 100, you might say, oh, I went a little overboard. So you might want to say, I just want to ease off in that adjustment a little bit. So I might come back to around an 80, 86, somewhere around there. Then we can click this uh, checkbox right here. 
before and after. So really nice. And remember, what we're doing here is really the initial stages of a editing process on a raw image. We're making one more adjustment, and to do that, I highly recommend that you come back to the layers here, and we're already here. Click the plus and click add a new adjustment layer, because what we're going to do is come to the essentials panel, and we're going to come down here to details enhancer, and this is really nice because we can work with small details, medium, and large details. And we also have some sharpening capabilities in here. And let's open up Advanced. And we also have some sliders to do some detail protection. I don't play with these too often, but they're in here. Uh, but we're going to work with small, medium, and large details. And I'm not going to touch a sharpen because I've already sharpened the image. Okay. But the reason I made the new layer is because I'm working with these three different values. And what if I thought I went a little bit too strong, but I liked where I set the three values, small, medium, and large. I can come up to the uh, layers here and just ease off in the entire adjustment and just, you know, correct my problem of over adding detail to the image. Okay, so let's come in here. Now, I highly recommend that you uh, zoom into your image at least 100% so you can see what's happening on the details. Now, let's start with the small details and let's bump it up to the right. So if we move it to the right, we're going to increase details. If we move it to the left, we'll decrease details only in the smaller detail areas. Okay, and that would be like these leaves and these small branches on the trees here. So I'm going to move that up. I'm going to bump it to the right and I'm thinking maybe somewhere right around there, like a 34. Now let's find the medium detail slider and pull it to the right and see what it's affecting. It's looking for medium sized details and we can move it to the right, we can move it to the left. And sometimes I will, sometimes I might move that to the left. In this case, I think I'm gonna move it to the right a little bit. And now let's work on the large details. So to the right, see what they're doing. Big, larger clusters of leaves and to the left. It's going to pull detail out. Okay, so on the large details, I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. Somewhere right around in there. Now we can click the toggle and see here's the before and here's the after. So look at that nice detail here. Now, let's click uh, the uh, canvas here and that gets us back to full size. And now let's come up here to um, layers. Now let's click Adjustment Layer 1, which is this guy right here, and let's go ahead and rename it to Detail, so we know that that's what we've done here. All right, now let's click the check. Here's the before and here's the after. So we've added a nice amount of detail, but if we felt we went a little bit too far, we can come to the Adjustments Amount and slide that back a little bit to the left and ease off in that amount. Now let's click the checkbox, Before and After. That looks a little better. And we typically err on the side of adding a little bit too much, and that's why I do like these layers that we can pull these amount sliders back, which is really nice. Now, if I'm looking at this image and I say, you know what, my color's a little bit too strong, I can come back to the color layer here and maybe ease off in this adjustment a little bit more here. But you see how naming those layers is really nice to get you get you back to that adjustment so you know know which one know where it's at. Now let's click on the color here before and after. Let's not forget to turn our detail layer back on so let's click on this checkbox right here. Now let's click the split screen and move this slider to the right. So there's how the image started right out of camera which is a little bit of capture sharpening and noise reduction and we ended up with this right here. All right, so I'm really happy with it. I'm going to click the uh, split screen again. Now let's click the eyeball. Here's before and here's after. So I'm really happy with this edit. Now remember, this is pretty much an initial editing phase coming right out of the camera, a camera raw image, and adjusting light, color, and detail. It's just a starting point. It's not a full edit by any stretch of the imagination. Light, color, and detail, all very important things in your editing process. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video today, and I hope it's helped you out. If you liked this video and enjoyed it today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please click the subscribe button and also click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. Also, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below. I really love hearing from each and every one of you. Thank you so much again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.